Hi and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. Let's talk about the third stage of labor. The third stage of labor refers to from the delivery of the baby to the delivery of the placenta. And AMTSL that is active management of third stage of labor that refers to us being actively intervening in this third stage of labor to reduce its duration which is usually from 15 minutes and we want to curb it to 5 minutes and this is to prevent the blood loss that occurs during the separation of placenta. The first step in the AMTSL includes the administration of injection oxytocin. Well injection oxytocin is administered as 10 international units IM within the first minute of the delivery of the baby. Now how is this available? This oxytocin is available in the ampules that are of 1 ml solution containing 5 international units. So we require 2 of those ampules and then we require a 2 cc or 5 cc syringe to fill it in and administer it as intramuscularly. Second step includes delay cord clamping. Basically we want to delay the clamping of cord after the birth of baby. As per the WHO, we should delay it at least for the one minute, for the first one minute. And as per the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, that is ACOG, it says that we should at least defer it by 30 to 60 seconds. And it is also said that we can delay the cord clamping till the cessation of cord pulsations. So in any of those scenarios, uh, it should not go beyond 5 minutes. So we can wait till 5 minutes. But WHO says that at least we should wait for first minute. And it has many benefits for the baby. It uh, for, all, for the both term and the preterm baby. See, it improves the iron stores. It improves the hemoglobin of the baby. It improves the red cell volume. And it also decreases the incidence of some uh, diseases such as the intraventricular hemorrhage and necrotizing enterocolitis. And the studies have shown that the diseases, these diseases decrease in incidence if we do a delayed cord clamping. So we should always do a delayed cord clamping unless the baby requires an immediate resuscitative procedure. The third step is controlled cord traction. We want to control our traction on the placental cord so as we avoid the uterine inversion. The inversion can occur if we are going to uh, just pull on that cord. So before telling you how to do this controlled cord traction, I want to explain you regarding some directions. See, imagine the patient's head is toward that side and perineum is towards me. The head end of the patient, towards the head end of the patient, this direction, this direction is upwards. And towards me or patient's foot end, it is downward. And towards the floor is backwards. So now you have a rough idea what are the directions I am going to talk about. So now this controlled cord traction, it is done by the modified brand and view method. So what is this method? It requires two hands. So if my first hand, that is going to be suprapubically. The palmar surface of this hand is going to assess the uterus. It is required for two purposes. First, I will get to know when the uterus is contracting and second, I want to press down the uterus or I want to press down suprapubically in a direction of upward and backward. See, upward was this like and backward is towards the floor. So, upward and backward is this direction. So, I am going to press on suprapubically like this upward and backward and the traction on the cord will be downward and backward. This is downward and this is backward. So the traction will be downward and backward and traction is given only when the uterus is contracting. So my this suprapubic hand is going to feel for the uterine contraction and as the contraction comes I am going to pull on my cord and I am going to press suprapubically simultaneously so as to prevent the uterine inversion and to remove the placenta simultaneously. So 
this was about the controlled chord fraction now we get a question in our mind for how long should we perform this controlled chord traction well as the uterine contraction comes you are going to perform a controlled chord traction and if it separates it is fine if it does not separate well leave it for 2 to 3 minutes and again assess for the another contraction and pull on the cord you can do this roughly for about 3 to 4 times and maximum you can wait for the separation of placenta till 30 minutes if in case within those 30 minutes after the birth of the baby the placenta does not deliver we have to prepare the patient for a manual removal of placenta that is MRP so now you know what is the active management of third stage of labor what are the three steps and the benefits that is it decreases the time duration that is from 15 minutes to 5 minutes and also decreases the blood loss of the patient but are there any disadvantage well yes there can be a disadvantage that is there can be increased incidence of a retained placenta but that is very minimal that is about one percent so there are many benefits only a slight disadvantage that also in one percent cases so this was all about the active management of third stage of labor. If you like my video, please do like, subscribe and share this channel. Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. Thanks for watching.